A very good afternoon today being the 19th day of May 2020, a day when a lot indeed has been happening in the country and we're here to inform you and to make sure that uh, you understand what is happening in Kenya and beyond borders from matters sports to business to an update on what is happening with regards to the mitigation measures on COVID-19 both locally and globally. We'll also be talking about some bit of politics, the touch on the Jubilee Party. Remember after the ouster of uh, Senator Kichumba Murkomen and uh, Susan Kihika, a lot has been happening as political leaders are giving their opinion. And we'll also be looking at uh, matters education and security from across the counties. It's a comprehensive news bulletin. Welcome on board. My name is Safin Aching Oma and our sign language interpreter is Lucy Maura. Now we begin with uh, the politics of the day. A section of leaders allied to one faction of the Jubilee Party now claims that the ouster of their colleagues in the Senate leadership and the mooted censure of some MPs at the National Assembly by the ruling outfit is aimed at intimidating them over their stand with respect to its political trajectory. The group led by Kikuyu Member of Parliament Kimani Ishungwa, however, promises to stay put even as they warned that the onslaught will only embolden them. Have a look. The ouster of Senators Kipchumba Murkomen and Susan Kihika from their positions of Majority Leader and Chief Whip respectively continues to draw mixed reactions from members of the political class. A section of Jubilee MPs, including Kikuyu MP Kimani Ishungwa, Madira lawmaker Rigathi Gashagwe and their Dagoreti South counterpart John Kiarie now terming it an attempt to chastise persons holding contrary opinion in the ruling outfit. The group that has openly expressed its political support to the Deputy President William Ruto is however adamant that the current onslaught will not yield much as it will not bend their resolve on the future of the country. But I am not distracted from my work. I will continue to work both as chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and also as member of parliament for Kikuyu because I was elected by the people of Kikuyu to serve them and I will continue to serve them in whatever capacity I can. Today, Senator uh, Keheka Nakuru uh, is a very popular leader because of the way she was treated unfairly. And they know the role she played in putting this government into power. Then you come and howled out of office for no good reason. The people are with her 100%. And as the ruling party extends an olive branch to the other competing political interests in the country, the lawmakers insist that the current clamor for a post-election coalition is ill-informed. Political parties should only recall us if we have div uh, diverted from uh, the policies that were espoused by the political parties, but not for politics, not because I support person A vis-a-vis uh, -vis person B. And in fact, anyone who benefits from opposition at this moment will be playing into a very dangerous political arena because the next two years will not be about what position you got in Senate or what position you got in Parliament. It will be about the quality of solutions you give to the problems that Kenyans are facing as we speak right now. They're instead calling on Parliament to focus on its oversight role in the management of funds allocated for fighting the coronavirus pandemic. The oversight required of Parliament is more critical now than ever before, so that we don't come out of this corona issue and parliament has not asked the right question and we end up with a corona gate. Not being able to account for all the monies that we have been channeling to this corona response. All right, and uh, now on more efforts to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and helping Kenyans at this particular time, we now want to cross over to Mombasa County. The Governor Ali Hassan Joho is currently speaking. Let's listen in. Them today, but all that said and done, again we go back to the point of who contributes what, who sacrifices what, who commits to what. If we did that, then we are assured, as a people, we would change the discussion. The narrative would change. But for as long as we want to live our day-to-day -day lives like nothing is wrong, then we are bound for bigger problems. So my humble appeal to all of us, really, let us use all the efforts 
within our means to change this narrative. Let us not be the people, because the magic in COVID is only three things. And I'm glad that every effort from us, from national government, from, from civil society, is focusing on one thing. If you want to defeat COVID, like other countries have done, then the magic is in the test, treat, and isolate. It's as simple as that. Test, treat, isolate. We have the capacity to treat you, to look after you. We have worked on mechanisms of even self-quarantine or isolation. If you meet certain guidelines provided for by our public health, we encourage people to do that. So there cannot be any excuse. There has been cases, even here in Mombasa, where people that were positive were allowed to look after themselves at home. And they adhered fully to the guidelines. Today they are negative and normalcy in their lives has resumed. But those that argue so much, cases where when Old Town was being put under cessation of movement, there are people who thought they were very smart because it was announced at 3 to take effect at 7 p.m. Quite a number of them left. They left in a hurry to go and hide somewhere. That is why you see a surge in places like and put you back. You ran away. And then the result is that you go to another village, smaller village, 100 households. We already have 11 cases, and we are contact tracing one more, 100 people more, making life so difficult even for the public health officers. People in the intelligence community, people in the police, CID, focusing on tracking you on the phone, like the case where we've had someone from Kilifi. This guy went through almost seven villages to a point where he was found by police. Why are you running away? Who have you stolen? Uh, what have you stolen and from who? That you need to hide. You become a fugitive because you suspect you could be corona positive. Surely, what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? All right, that is uh, the Mombasa County Governor Ali Hassan Joho. According to him, testing, treating, and isolating, this will really go a long way in helping dealing with the COVID-19 global pandemic. He is also raising a very fundamental concern about those who are escaping from uh, areas that have been put under partial lockdown, like, for example, the Old Town, saying that these people could actually pose a risk to other residents in the region. We'll be staying closer to the coastal region, and we have our colleague Michael Modiga who will be giving us details about uh, more on what is happening today. Also, the governor was uh, uh, kick-starting a program that seeks to feed over 2,000 families uh, during this uh, particular time. Now, staying on matters COVID-19, now to Wajia County, the county government is calling on well-wishers and other development partners to contribute towards the COVID-19 kitty as the administration intensifies efforts aimed at cushioning vulnerable communities. Wajia Governor Ambassador Mohamed Abdi says the effects of the pandemic have hit area residents hard, especially during this time when there is restriction of movement across many areas. Many Kenyans have taken a hit as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, with several left unemployed and many businesses closed. Wajia County Governor Ambassador Mohamed Abdi calling on the various development partners to aid the vulnerable in society who have mostly lost their only source of livelihoods. We therefore call on other partners, notably World Food Program, to step in and cushion the vulnerable communities during this unprecedented difficult time. The governor saying that all non-governmental organizations were welcome to aid the locals while at the same time cautioning those intimidating well-wishers offering relief in the region. But everybody is welcome and anybody who tries to obstruct uh, well-wishers from either doing their business 
or providing coverage to them will face the music. The governor spoke when he received personal protective equipment estimated to be worth 1.2 million shillings from World Vision International with the organization's representative Abdirahman Kuno pledging to continue offering aid to vulnerable members of society during this difficult period. Nancy Okware, Channel One News. Now, parents and guardians have been challenged to play a more proactive role in the lives of their children during the coronavirus pandemic. National Anti-Female Mutilation Board Chair Agnes Pareo has said that the continued stay of learners at home have predisposed them to societal ills that could have negative effects on their lives. Jackie Wambiru tells us more. On May 4th, 2020, schools across the country were expected to resume learning for the second term. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government extended the reopening date for one month as part of efforts to scale up national efforts to fight the spread of the virus. And as the government strives to mitigate the effects of COVID-19, parents and guardians have been urged to be more involved in the lives of their children so as to prevent any form of exploitation. This is going to be like an opportunity for those who wanted to marry off their daughters to do so. And I want to ask them not to do that. Please help your daughters. Please take care of your daughter so that she doesn't fall under this trap of the curfew and the shutdown of schools. Because this is going to be a hard moment for them because these, these girls need mother care. The mothers should be close to their daughters because all these hours, the girls are idle and they are at home. National Anti-Female Mutilation Board Chair Agnes Pareo says the continued stay of young children at home has exposed them to societal ills that could have far-reaching implications on their lives. Pareo pointing out that early marriages and teen pregnancies are some of the challenges facing learners from predominantly pastoralist communities. The grassroots organizations have noticed increased incidences of gender-based violence against women and girls. Incidences of child marriage have increased since the curfew and the schools shut down. This is because the girls are at home with their parents for long hours and this gives an opportunity for them to marry off their daughters and those who want to cut them can do it silently at night. This even as she reiterated on the need to adhere to the government's directive so as to aid in curbing the spread of COVID-19. Reporting for Channel One News, I'm Jackie Wambiru. All right, remember you can also stream uh, this uh, broadcast online. We appreciate our online community. Lynn Ogutu, watching from Mtuapa, Dogo Tak, you're watching us all the way from Lodwa Town. We also appreciate one Clinton Akidiva. You're watching us from Lamu. And of course, Dismas Rop, you say, tuned in from Lesos. We are now going to be taking a very short break right here on KBC Lunchtime News. Don't go too far. We are back with much more. I just recently found out Abasi holds bare knuckle fights at his club, the gentleman only night. What has this got to do with Jemu? Jemu is fighting for Abasi. That man never ceases to amaze me. Sometimes you have to lay a trap and wait. I have a plan. Let me action it.
Welcome back and thank you so much once again for staying tuned on KBC Channel 1. Now, moving on, residents of Samburu County are now calling on the government to come to their rescue in the wake of dwindling drugs and food supplies in the county. The COVID-19 effect has now taken a toll in the county, especially for persons living with HIV as well as tuberculosis patients who are having a hard time accessing food and drugs. This truck loaded with food stuff came as relief for the residents of Samburu County. However, the relief is short-lived as not everyone will benefit. Among the people queuing for the supplies is Angela, who is among those living with HIV, who says it has been challenging times to access medication as well as food. Hakuna chakula iko kwa nyumba na watu wengi wanaumia sana. Kuna watu kama sasa sisi tuko katikati hatujafika ile umri ya kuchukua ya kuchukua, ya kuchukua pesa ya mapencha na manini. Samburu Women Representative Maison Leshomo saying relief food recently supplied to the county by the national government was not enough calling for more support. Tume nimeenda manyata moja karibu watu sita wamesimia mama na watoto waine na ndio maana tuko hapa kuangalia wale wabaya zaidi baada ya wiki mbili kama hivi ndio itaendelea tutakuja kuambiwa kuna watu wamekufa kwa sababu ya njaa sentiments echoed by other leaders from the region na tena hata tuna wakimbizi wale wamepotea upande wa Samburu North kwa sababu ya security wamekuja hapa na tungeomba wafadhili tungeomba hata na eh, serikali kuu iendelee kushikiana na hawa waheshimiwa na ili kusaidia watu wetu. For Channel 1 News, I'm Sarafina Robi. All right, now moving on, so, social distancing has, a bill, has been billed as a significant measure in containing the spread of COVID-19. But for those living in informal settlements, practicing social distance is proving to be a difficult issue, putting some of them in a, a, a position where the most vulnerable people are at risk of contracting coronavirus. Today, we explore various ways of preventing the spread of the deadly virus in the slums. So what we are telling uh, people in the form of settlements uh, is one, to try as much as possible to stay at home. But we have seen this advice not being heeded to because they have to go out and, uh, you know, work to get money to buy food. So in as much as advise them to stay at home, we see them not staying at home, we see them still going about to do their mijengo and do what they always do to earn a living. But our advice is for them to stay at home, to try and wash their hands as much as possible, and to avoid crowds. So that has been our message to them. We still continue speak, speaking to them in, with those messages. And uh, most importantly, is to avail water to them, uh, to do social protection to them, so that those who must go out to look for food, if they can be provided with this food, then they will not have a reason to go out. They'll stay home because they are food. And the national and county governments have intensified mitigation efforts as they seek to cushion vulnerable populations from the adverse effects of the coronavirus pandemic. The efforts coming amid heightened security across the country as authorities move to enhance guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health aimed at containing the spread of the virus. Security team and COVID-19 emergency team in Transoya County are on high alert to arrest truck drivers allegedly transporting people to the area. County Commissioner Samo Jung saying that police officers are on high alert to arrest people entering the county through dubious means from high-risk areas. Subiri kidogo tumalize haya maneno na utasafiri kama kawaida. Ukisaidia kueneza ugonjwa, hauta safua hauta ruhusiwa kuwa ukisafiri kwa hivyo vumilia usisafiri tukipata watu hatua inachukuliwa kwa hivyo nataka kutoa onyo kwa wale ambao wanaendesha trucks kama utapatikana wewe unaendesha truck ndio unabeba watu katika hizo trucks rest assured tutakushukulia tu ya kisheria kulingana na public health act ambayo inafanya kazi sasa 
In Isiolo, over 4,000 needy households benefited from food and non-food items from an Islamic religious organization in a bid to cushion them from the adverse effects of coronavirus pandemic. Our prayers are some count that uh, they continue. They continue supporting the vulnerable people. They continue supporting the, the, uh, with us with a lot, especially during this time when um, the county or the sub county or the county is facing a lot of uh, uh, starvation, a lot of uh, uh, the issues of uh, coronavirus. Elsewhere, there was confusion at the Malaba border after Uganda Port Health officers handed over a person suspected to have contracted COVID 19 to Kenya public health officers. Documents from Uganda indicated that the 36-year-old had tested negative for COVID-19 disease, but when he was tested by Kenya health officers, the results turned positive. The suspect was transferred to a Lupe quarantine center, where he will remain for the next 14 days. Uh, he waited actually for about two days or, or three days. That is when the results came or were released on Friday. I, I was told that uh, there is somebody among those who are uh, specimens who are taken who has turned out to be positive. When I inquired about the name, I was told uh, it was the same person who we brought from Uganda. And with increased cases of truck drivers testing positive for coronavirus, Migori Governor Okoto Bado has appealed to the national government to establish a functional medical laboratory along the Kenya-Tanzania common border. The county boss says most of the positive cases in the country have been traced to Tanzania. First and foremost, you must protect your people. But uh, it should now not mean that we are cutting off our diplomatic relations. It does not mean that now we are chasing everybody away. It only means that for the time being, we must be extra careful and very, very conscious in taking the steps that will guarantee our safety as a people. Meanwhile, persons living with hearing impairment disability in Mombasa County who have been economically affected by the deadly coronavirus pandemic had a reason to smile after a well-wisher donated food and face masks. Mohamed Salim Thenge, who made the donation at Tudor Estate in Mvita constituency to over 50 persons with hearing impairment, said these are unprecedented times when able Kenyans do need to support less fortunate and needy member of the society. And the Italian government has started evacuating its citizens from the coastal region as a way of protecting them against COVID-19. More than 250 Italian nationals in the North Coast region alone were on Sunday evacuated by a chartered plane that landed at the Mombasa International Airport. Coastal counties of Mombasa, Kilifi and Kwale have been placed under containment after they recorded a substantial number of COVID-19 positive cases. News from across the counties. Talking about counties, we appreciate DJ Tenta watching all the way from Nyeri. Sifisio Marcelo, you're tuned from South Africa. Keep Korea Boas watching from Keep Tere Center. Thank you so much uh, for creating time for us. Now, let me bring you up to speed with this land tussle in Rwai. Hundreds of squatters claiming to be victims of Rwai and Madare 4A evictions in Nairobi have invaded the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation land in Matungulu, Machakos County. The group is part of squatters whose houses were recently brought down in Rwai by the government as it sought to reclaim the land to pave way for the expansion of the Dandora sewerage plant. These are the destructive victims of Rye and Methari lands in Nairobi. The people had early on been driven out of their homes after the government sought to reclaim the land to pave way for the expansion of Dandora sewerage plant in the city. <laughs> The families have now invaded the 1,200 acres KBC land in Matungulo, Machakos County. According to the chair, Samuel Gidinji, the group claims that they moved into the area after they were promised that they will be resettled on the land. 
last week but one it was on thursday tulikuja hapa na ps muragori ps of land tulikuwa na dcc wa ruai anaitwa i think uh, 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 chacha something chacha daniel or peter chacha ile kitu ilifanya watulete hapa walikuwa wanataka kujua kama roho zetu zitaridhika na hii shamba Matungulu sub county police commander Kipkemoi Kirui however says he is not aware of any group of people who want to be resettled in the said land and will only allow anyone to occupy the land once served with the legal or reliable order from the government. Kwa shamba ni inasemekana ni ya KBC. Na vile tunajua kuna case kati ya KBC na na Koma Ranch ambayo case hiyo inaendelea kotini. So tumeongea nao na tumewaelezea kwamba waje na mabarua ya kuonesha kwamba eh, wameambiwa waingie katika hiyo shamba Ka, hata kama ni sehemu ya hiyo shamba. For Channel One News, I'm Sarafina Robi. Away from that report by Sarafina, a 20-year-old man is nursing gunshot wounds at the Garissa Referral Hospital after he was allegedly shot by Kenya Police Reservice in Mlangoni area of Tana River County. The attack is linked to the ongoing border dispute between residents of Tana River and Kitui counties that has persisted for over a decade. Elsewhere, residents of Nasewa in Matayo's constituency want the government to involve them in, the, in a structured dialogue and agree on how the controversial 840, 843 acres Nasewa land will be utilized. Ibrahim Mohamed Dirie is said to have been hiding his camel when he was ambushed by two armed men who fired at him injuring his leg. According to his relative Aidan Abdi, they reported the matter to Bangale police station, but no arrest has been made so far. Residents now want the national government to resolve the boundary row once and for all to avoid a further loss of lives. Kulingana na katiba yetu impia, ama ata ya zamani, kila moja ana haki ya kuishi pahali popote ndani ya nchi hii. Hii mambo ya kuambiwa we ni Somali, we kwenu si hapa imetumiza sana siku nyingi kama sisi watu ya North Eastern. The border dispute between the two counties of Tana River and Kitui has seen many lives lost with the latest being the killing of a midman. Na Kenya haina mpaka wa kikabila. Unaambiwa unaweza ishi pahali popote bora tu mnaishi kindugu tunaomba serikali yetu tunayopenda ichukue hatua ama wachukue hatua hasa mheshimiwa Fred Matiangi ambaye ni interior minister achukue hatua na kila mahali tunatembea tusiitwe hawa ni wasomali hawa hapa si kwenu endeni Somalia watu wakikosana siku mbili tu mtu unaambiwa hapa sio kwenu Elsewhere, <laughs> residents of Nasewa in Matayo's constituency want the government to involve them in a structured dialogue and agree how 843 acres Nasewa land should be used. Speaking in Nasewa, the residents allege that a private investor had leased the land for 50 years, which they said has had no benefit to the community. Tulikuwa tuletoe factory. Hii factory ingasaidia watoto wetu hata kwa kusoma. Kwa sababu tungelikuwa tunapika kideri usiku, tunakuja tunausa hapa usubi na uji, tunalipia watoto yetu school fees. Waliweka hapa mnyazi kakuja ikachukua ikapanda miwa. Miwa hii wa mama wetu wake wetu wakipita hapa ndani wanarepiwa. Watoto wetu wakienda shule prime and second wanarepiwa. They vowed to oppose the leasing of the land and planting of sugarcane by local miller which they say was against an earlier proposal to establish an industrial park. Sirikali isikie kilio chetu. Wale watu wachache wenye wamechukua hongo na kwa kambuni wanadanganya wanaongea na kina Ali wa kambuni ya kwamba sisi tumekubali hii shamba ipandwe miwa hatutaki ipande miwa tunataka factory kuje Caroline Kamau reporting for Channel 1 Lunch Time News now, in a move aimed at ensuring participation of all members of parliament in house business as COVID-19 crisis rages on, senators are now proposing the adoption of virtual voting in the chamber. The legislators' plea coming as Senate Speaker Kenneth Lusaka noted that sections of general guidelines guiding involvement, interaction and participation in house business may have to be reviewed to facilitate smooth running of the Senate when faced with extraordinary circumstances 
crisis such as now the country fighting the coronavirus pandemic. The speaker, however, dismissed claims that members of the Senate have been voting on behalf of others, terming it as unfounded accusation. In the meantime, Lusaka says the House Business Committee has requested the relevant committee to consider various circumstances brought forth by the COVID-19 situation and make proposals for amendments of Senate standing orders, including provision of virtual seating of plenary. I just wanted. I think it's looking at our standing orders on how we should amend them so that we can be able to incorporate uh, the virtual uh, online discussions. Uh, and, and I must say, uh, of late, we have benefited heavily in the committee of the House uh, through the Zoom virtual meetings. And there's no governor at this point in time will want to come to Nairobi. They'll, they'll use COVID-19 as a perfect excuse. They'll first of all say that Nairobi has been cordoned off, and they'll say that there's COVID in parliament, and so they'll prefer to do accountability sessions on Zoom. Let us, let us, uh, let us be inventive, let us be creative, because that is the future. In Vizuri, he liliwe kama funzo kwetu, tuseme ya kwamba baada ya ugonjwa huu kuondoka ama janga hili kutondokea tutarudi pa, 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 pale pale tulikotoka ni vizuri tusome na janga hili laliwe kama funzo kwetu kuendelea mbele kukumbatia teknolojia kama sehemu zingine za ulimwengu ambazo zimeendelea hata sisi tuna uwezo tuna ujuzi na bwana speaker nataka kukubaliana na wewe vile ulivyosema mia kwa mia tutaendelea na mikutano yetu tukitumia vyombo ambavyo vitakavyotuwezesha tukitumia teknolojia asante sana bwana therefore i think there is in our setup as senators i think we should not be left out of that technology we should be able to transact our our business technologically it's called adjusting to the new normal participating regardless of how you will do it. We are waiting to see how that indeed is going to pan out. Now, looking at the global perspective on the spread of coronavirus, the United States President Donald Trump has threatened to permanently halt U.S. funding to the World Health Organization and quit the organization. His threat came just hours after he accused WHO of playing to the whims of China in a letter to the agency's director general that he shared on Twitter. The coronavirus death toll in the U.S. surpassed 91,000 Tuesday, with the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases climbing above 1.5 million across the country, according to Johns Hopkins University Tally. President Donald Trump has threatened to permanently halt funding for the World Health Organization and withdraw the United States from the United Nations Health Agency if it does not make substantive improvements in the next 30 days. Earlier on Monday, Trump attacked the WHO, calling it a puppet of China. And the United States uh, pays them $450 million a year. China pays them $38 million a year. And they're a puppet of China. They're uh, China-centric, to put it nicer, but they're a puppet of China. The president froze U.S. funding for the WHO in April. U.S. is the country with the highest number of coronavirus infection globally. Meanwhile, a measure of the number of people claiming unemployment benefits in Britain soared in April, the first full month of the government's coronavirus lockdown, according to government data. And the coronavirus is spreading so fast among indigenous people in the most remote parts of Brazil Amazon rainforest that doctors are having to evacuate the most seriously ill patients by plane. Brazil Indigenous Health Service, CSI, reported on Monday that at least 23 indigenous people have died from COVID-19. Elsewhere, Qatar has confirmed 12 coronavirus cases in its central prison, but denied reports of a widespread outbreak, saying all infected patients were transferred immediately to a specialized hospital, isolating them from the others. In Africa, foreigners visiting Tanzania will no longer be subjected to mandatory 14-day quarantine, according to the country's health ministry. The new guidelines released by officials on Monday now require travelers to simply be screened for symptoms at the point of entry. 
elsewhere. South Sudan's Vice President Riek Machar has tested positive for coronavirus. His wife, Defense Minister Angelina Tenney, some bodyguards and other staff have also tested positive. And Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni says his government will distribute free masks to all citizens aged above six years old before lifting coronavirus containment measures. The wearing of the masks in public was made mandatory early in May. Globally, there have been more than 4.8 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, with over 320,000 people having succumbed to the illness, according to John Hopkins University. Nearly 1.9 million people have recovered. For Channel 1 News, I am Emily K. Bade. Right, it's now time for us to focus on matters business and the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics embarked on a survey to assess the social economic impact of the COVID-19 on households. It uh, indeed uh, released a report and currently speaking at the Treasury buildings is the CS uh, Treasury Ukuri Etani to talk more on uh, how the coronavirus pandemic indeed has affected thousands of Kenyans economically. Let's listen into what he has to say. And to this effect, we allocated, we had a budget of 10 billion. The president announced a budget of 10 billion. That money is not flowing. Why the informal settlement? Most of the people who have lost jobs as a result of this challenge are living within urban centers, but they mainly live within the informal settlement because they depend on the daily, you know, the daily wages. Now, because the activity in the Australia and other places have actually gone down, these people will be out of it. They are not told, they, will be not, they have no income. And what happens then? Then they will have no food to buy. It's a result of this that a number of additional households have been identified and, uh, and uh, they are now receiving uh, weekly stimpet to support them, you know. And the result of all this also support the local economy because you give them money, the informal, the, the slum economy is going to thrive. The quota, the quota meat, the quota cooking oil, the maize, and oh, that's going to really go a long way in supporting and sustaining the, the supply chain process. From the farmer who produces the vegetables, who supplies the city, as a result of this, this is going to help. You're also aware that uh, we allocated 13 billion, which is now for payment of pending bills. Mainly, you know, like 3 million and below not for big contractors, spread across the country. And they are now living in areas, particularly targeting the NYS supplies, uh, the correctional services. Each of the correctional facilities in the various locations in the counties have those challenges. Now we have released 13 billion for this purpose. And this is going to support uh, those economies at the lower level, including up to Nairobi. And then these are in addition to now the tax uh, reduction for all these. We are also looking in this coming budget, now before Parliament, we are working on a stimulus package, but details uh, we've recommended, and uh, it's now, HE will uh, now at his own time consider and make appropriate uh, uh, you know, announcement if he finds the proposals to be in order. I think those are the areas that we are looking at. Don't forget also, we are looking at a, to support the SMEs. We are, going to, we are looking at the credit guarantee scheme. So we do not give out money, but you know, we make SMEs access cheap loans, which is guaranteed by government at affordable rates, to enable them you know, sustain their, uh, their businesses, to enable them to expand their businesses, to enable them to manage uh, you know, those local economies by supporting, uh, uh, you know, the chain from the lower side also to the, the top. 
and we are looking at broad areas whether to make sure that you know we have we, we, we stand up against this challenge for the time being thank you very much and uh, may god bless you all right that is the treasury cs uh, okuru yetani are the treasury uh, buildings uh, talking just moments after the release of uh, that uh, survey by the Kenya uh, National Bureau of Statistics that is just looking at the socioeconomic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Interesting report there. Nationally, 30.5% of households were unable to pay rent on the agreed date with the landlords. Part of the findings of this particular survey. We'll be giving you more details in our subsequent news bulletins. Now, moving on, the value of Kenya's top listed farms has shrunk to 1.6 trillion shillings this year to March compared to 2.1 trillion shillings registered last year according to Africa's top 250 companies report in the latest ranking by South Africa's Africa business magazine Safaricom is the most valuable company among East African listed companies climbing to the 10th position from 14th last year with a market capitalization of 1 trillion shillings equity group holdings EAB and KCB Group ranked 82nd, 19th, and 92nd, respectively. Cooperative Bank is ranked position 110. Kenya lost three companies in the ranking dominated by South Africa and Egyptian firms to register 11 companies. South African interest levels close to those last seen in the 1970s as the Reserve Bank seeks to bolster the country's economy. Economies expect a cut in borrowing costs of between 25 and 50 basis points Thursday following a meeting of the bank's Monetary Policy Committee. Details of this and other stories in our Africa Business Roundup. South Africa's economy, which already slipped into a recession at the end of 2019, could contract by double digits this year due to the sudden halt in economic activities brought about by the nationwide lockdown to stem the spread of the coronavirus. The Reserve Bank has already joined the world's leading central banks in aggressively cutting interest rates and increasing bond purchases in an attempt to show up liquidity. The bank has cut interest rates by 225 basis points so far this year, having slashed rates by 100 BPS at each of the previous two meetings, taking the repurchase rate to 4.25%, its lowest level since 1973. During April, it brought 11.4 billion rand worth of government bonds and relaxed regulations to allow banks to loan more. Meanwhile, energy investment and policy company Africa Oil and Power AOP has pledged its commitment to an initiative dubbed Equal by 30 campaign to advance the participation of the continent's women in the clean energy transition. A joint initiative of the Clean Energy, Education and Empower Initiative and International Energy Agency, Equal by 30 engages public and private sector companies and organizations to target equal pay, leadership and opportunities for women in the clean energy sector. From hiring and procurement to strategy and outreach, the company says the campaign aims to achieve a minimum of 30% female participation across all facets of a participating organization with progress assessed on a yearly basis in the continent. AOP follows the Africa Energy Chamber and Centurion Law Group as key signatories in Africa, which pledged their commitment to the campaign earlier this month. Elsewhere, offshore geochemical exploration and heat flow measurement company TDI Brooks International has, through contracts to Deepwater Explorer TGS, completed an offshore multi beam phase at the offshore in the Niger Delta. The survey took place in water depths of 750 to 3,500 meters and is Nigeria's first regional multi client multi beam and sea flow sampling study. Upon completion of analysis, geochemical data is combined with geophysical and geological data sets to provide insight into migrated hydrocarbons, their type and maturity, and to prove up charge. Surface geochemistry exploration campaigns are a low-cost exploration tool that provides insight into reservoirs at depth before a well is ever drilled. 
and residents of Ngita Kito in Lodua, Turkana County have held peaceful demonstrations accusing Kenya Power of its reluctance in restoring electricity in the area which has been out for a month. The residents claim that delays in replacing the faulty transformer has adversely affected proper running of businesses and households in the area and want the situation remedied. Lodwa is considered the economic hub for Trukana County, housing local and governmental facilities including Trukana's biggest health facility and the main referral hospital, Lodwa County Hospital. However, for the last one month, over 2,500 households and businesses within Nitakito area have been in the dark. So, I would like to say that the government has been in the dark for a long time because there are people who have been in the dark for a long time. Waliwekewa sti, wali apply stima na sisi. Wengine wakapata, wengine wakamiwa, mitasao, asiko. Na ukikuja kwa ofisi unaambiwa, ongea msuri, ndia upate mita. Paka leo kuna mtu anapawa na serikali ilitoa offer ya kuwekea kila mtu stima. Kwani ofisi iko na shida gani? The irate residents staged peaceful demonstrations at the Kenya Power Lord Station, calling for the speedy replacement of the faulty transformer. Tumekaa kwa giza muda mrefu sana unapata kwamba wakazi wa Ngita Kito hawawezi kwenda dispensary dispensary iko pale kijijini lakini unapata hawezi ku hawezi uh, kutibiwa wanakuwa referred to the LRCH hospital kwa sababu gani hakuna stima pale ya kuweza kuweka uh, wagonjwa pale na madawa pia yanaharibika we cannot be you know kept in darkness as clients who have been uh, getting served for one month and we are referred to Eldoret and we know this is a sub-region office with almost all the required items. We do not understand why the manager is referring us to Eldoret. Speaking to Channel 1 on phone, Kenya Power Station head engineer Carl dismissed the claims and assured residents the situation had been remedied. Um, uh, I'm aware of the issue. Yeah, there was a, a faulty transformer and we apologize for them being, uh, staying long without power and the transformer was replaced okay. yesterday before midday. The angry residents have vowed to keep up with the demonstrations until power is reinstated. Power yetu irudisho leo, within 24 hours, iyo moto irudi. Sisi na yetu ishi kama wakenya wengine wenye wanaishi dauni, wenye wanaishi kwa vijuji wenye kona stima. Regina Manyara Gitao reporting for Channel One Business. Let me now update you also on some sports news. English Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters is hopeful that Liverpool can have a trophy presentation if they seal a first league title since 1990. Plans for England's top flight's resumption are underway after all 20 clubs unanimously voted for a first stage of a return to training starting today. Dini voiced this project restart concerns, and the 31 year old has now retaliated those doubts where Celtic fans were forced to leave the Parkhead area of Glasgow by police after turning up to celebrate the club's latest Scottish Premiership triumph. The Scottish Professional Football League held a board meeting on Monday and confirmed the decision to end the season early. On Friday, the 12 top flight clubs had agreed that the campaign could not be completed. That duly handed Celtic a ninth successive league title, with the Neil Lennon coach side having had a 13 point lead over rivals Rangers before the league was suspended in early March.
And on that uh, sporting note, you've come to the end uh, of uh, some of the news that we have been working on for you. But remember, we still got more and we'll be updating you in due course. Kerry Eteri, you're watching. Thank you for your time. Kevon Kevon Oduor, live from Eldoret. Gitau Wakimata, you're also watching. Thank you for all of you who tuned in, both on TV and those who watched online. My name is Safin Achieng Oma, our sign language interpreter has been Lucy Mwaura. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank mm -hmm. you. Vera Beauty College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Thika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management, and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Thicker Branch, 0725 Zero 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 seven zero six Meru Branch Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution. On. I wish I could tell father that brother Sushim has become the greatest warrior through deception, not through his ability. He has broken the rules at every stage. How can such a person become the higher to the throne? Should I tell the truth? But will anyone believe me over here? Have you seen Ashok somewhere? No. Even we are searching for him. I wonder where he has gone. The last time.